Hello, BC chemistry students. This is Jarabi here, and um, this is uh, class number three on chapter 10, uh, looking at organic molecules and their reactions. Uh, we're looking at reaction pathways. And in a nutshell, what are reaction pathways? Everything that you've learned in the past two classes. How do you get from one um, organic molecule to another? How do you get from ethane to alkyl ethanoate? You use a reaction pathway. You react one thing to another, and that to another, and that to another. And then you end up with a reaction pathway. This is something that you need to know for uh, your upcoming exam um, at the end of the year. Um, it's part of the study design, and it's really important to make sure you know general reactions uh, for these organic molecules. But let's start off with a warm up. Do now. Um, when I when I say go, or when the when the question comes up, you'll have thirty seconds to do. Um, a question from the VCAA exam from 2010, exam number one, and it's multiple choice question number 10. You have 30 seconds from when you see it, and it's going to start in three, two, one, go. Okay, we are 10 seconds down. Okay, 10 seconds to go. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and stop. Okay, did you get an answer down? Were you able to answer A, B, C, or D? The Joker is watching you. And who will be the Joker? Let's have a look at the answer. The answer is C. Uh, for this uh, organic molecule, the first thing that you do, and we looked at before, is you find at the longest chain. One, two, three, four, five, six is the longest chain. Not five, not four, but six. So don't even look at the answers, just look at the question, and then look for the right answer. One, two, three, four, five, six. So you know it's going to be hexane. Beth, eth, pro, but, pent, hex. Hexane is six, and it should automatically cross out A, B, and D. But just for clarity's sake, it's to make sure you've got it 100% right, it also says 3, 4, dimethyl hexane. And lo and behold, it is true. 1, 2, 3, 4. At the 3 point, we have a methyl group, and at the 4 group, we have a methyl group. Excuse me. So, this is the correct answer. C, 70% of people got that right on the exam, and hopefully you are part of that 70%. If not, go back to the questions, um, as per the practice exams, and do some more practice. Get it right. 30 seconds is plenty of time to do a multiple choice question in the exam. Uh, you should aim to do um, your multiple choice questions in 30 second allotments. If you get them done quicker, fantastic, but try not to spend more than 30 seconds at a time, otherwise you'll run out of time for the short answer questions. So like I said before, we're looking at reaction pathways. How do you get from one organic molecule to the other based upon the things that you already know about them? You should know that if you want to get ethane to chloroethane, you need chlorine gas. Okay? Uh, and you need to react that to, ha to have one chlorine group jump on there. And you also need to know that to get from ethane to chloroethane to ethanol, it's a substitution reaction and that requires a, uh, a base, sodium hydroxide. Not water. For sodium hydroxide, and then from there it goes on. So the learning intentions today, um, and make sure you copy these down, is that you should be able to recall and apply the specific reactions of alkanes, that is the, the reactions from one type of alkane to another, to create the reaction pathways of all the other organic molecules. In particular, you should be able to create reaction pathways for organic molecules between alkanes and esters. So if you're given an alkane and an ester in the exam, you should be able to um, uh, draw all the links in between um, and at the end of this class you'll have an opportunity to do that as part of a previous practice exam question. And the second thing we're going to be looking at is looking at yield and how do we account yield into um, our reaction pathways. You should be able to describe the importance of yield and calculate yields based upon the given reaction pathways. Here's the same tips from the last two classes, make sure you have your textbook open unless I tell you not to. Uh, make sure you write down the learning intentions, the test criteria, and that you actually fulfill them. Make sure you write down important notes from chapter 10.5, and make sure you don't copy them word for word from my slides. Make them yourselves. And make sure you also interact with Edmodo. 
put your questions up on there. If I've asked you to submit work, please do that as well. These slides will also be available on Edmodo. So let's have a look at reaction pathways. It's important to know because from the study design for chemistry, you have to know the reactions of alkanes, alkenes, amines, halo alkenes. Halo mean like halogens, like chlorine. If it's chlorine attached to it, it's a halogen, halo alkane. Alkanols and carboxylic acids. You need to have, be able to uh, prepare esters and therefore know their reaction pathways and be able to construct a flow chart to show the production of esters from alkenes. So this esters from alkenes, that is what I'm talking about here. Can you do reaction pathways from alkanes to esters or alkenes to esters for that matter? And you need to be able to describe generic reactions from alkenes to esters. Okay? And you need to know all the parts in the middle. So if you have an alkene, what will you go to next? And what are the conditions you need? So here's what I want you to do first. On the previous class, I asked you to do a flowchart of all the reactions between alkenes and esters. Okay, so you should have a flowchart done by now. And if you haven't done that yet, I want you to pause the video, go back to the previous one, the previous class, and actually do that task. Draw up a map of the different reactions between alkenes to esters. Okay, they can be generic. You can use figure 10.26 as a guide, but I want you to do one uh, that accounts for everything that's on here. Reactions of alkenes, alkanes, amines, haloalkanes, alkanols, and carboxylic acids, and esters. Do that flowchart now, and then move on from here. Otherwise, it's going to be very confusing. Okay, so you've done your flowchart. Let's have a look at why we do these reaction pathways. Reaction pathways are all about finding the most efficient and cost conscious and pure way to create a or produce a target organic chemical. And organic chemists are people who are employed by businesses to do this on a large scale. Think of uh, scientists or organic chemists who work for, uh, let's see, a pharmaceutical company who make Panadol for you, or organic chemists who make Coca Cola for you, or Synth, uh, synthesize and produce and fraction um, petroleum for you. People do this and they have to look at the reaction pathways of their reactants and make sure that they can do everything in the best way possible. So the things to consider are these. In a reaction pathway, when you set everything up and you have, uh, let's say, uh, X amount of reactants and you want to make a certain product, how much energy, time, and money and materials are you going to use up in this, in this process? You want to minimize the amount of energy, the amount of time, the amount of money and the materials as much as possible to make it efficient without sacrificing on the quality of the product. What might take you three hours in a lab to create aspirin is now done by massive pharmaceutical companies in 30 seconds or something like that because they're able to make efficiency out of the energy, time, money, and materials. And they also look at um, the things that you're not going to use in the reaction. So if a reaction has, if a reaction pathway makes these byproducts that aren't useful or are just wasteful, or if the reaction itself doesn't actually produce a lot of products, you know, low yields, then that's something that you have to consider as well. So uh, in the scope of VC chemistry, you'll be making reactions um, and mapping them out, and at a low, at a smaller scale, you'll be able to decide how the reactions happen. What things will you do? What things will you not do? In order to make the reaction pathway the most efficient, uh, we mentioned this term yields, and the yield of a reaction is how much product is made from the reactants you have. So we have theoretical yield, and theoretical yield is how much you make. Um, if, you, if the mole ratios are exactly the same, so let's say you have um, one mole of glucose and six moles of oxygen, you expect to have six moles of carbon dioxide and six moles of water to be produced. That's a theoretical yield. One mole of glucose produces six moles of carbon dioxide, of whatever it is, carbon dioxide and water. However, the actual product or the actual yield is how much you really produce. So let's say you're making aspirin and you expect that your calculations tell you that because of the chemicals that you have, you should be able to make um, 500 grams of aspirin. However, when you actually do the experiment and do the reactions, you only make 350. 
350 out of the possible 500. Therefore, your, your yield is less than your theoretical, your actual yield is less than your theoretical, theoretical yield. We'll look at that soon. So let's get back to the reaction pathways, something that you need to practice. And in your textbooks, well, I want you to have them closed for now. Make sure you close your textbooks from here on in until I tell you to open them again. Um, we're going to look at how we produce ethyl propanoates. It's going to be an ethyl and a propanoate group from ethene and propane. So propane is going to make the propanoate bit. Ethene is going to be the ethyl bit. How are we going to do it? And you can see the first part here. How, what I want you to do is I want you to create a reaction pathway from ethene to ethanol. So start off with ethene, finish off with ethanol. What are the reactions you're going to have to have in between? Pause the video, and then when you're done, keep, press play. Okay. If you are stuck, um, this will help you out. For those of you who are finished, let's have a look. There's two ways to create ethanol from ethene. Pathway one. Ethene, if you react it with hydrochloric acid, it's an addition reaction and cl creates chloroethane. And then from chloroethane, you can react it again with this base here, this hydroxyl group, and do a substitution reaction to make ethanol. That's pathway number one. Number two is when you have ethene and you react it directly with water, the OH group attacks one part of the bond and the H attacks the other, and then you end up with ethanol straight away. So when it comes to reaction pathways, ethene to ethanol, there's two ways of doing it, this way or that way. From a, uh, just from, by looking at it, which one do you reckon is more efficient? Without looking at the time it takes for each reaction to occur, which one would be more efficient? Well, it would be pathway number two, because it has one less step. If it takes, if you can do something in one step, why would you do it in two? Pathway two may be more efficient. Keep that in mind because we're going to tie this together to make the, to make this whole molecule here. Okay. So let's have a look at, uh, part two. Part two is looking at this part of the, um, the ester. It's the propyl bit, the pro, the propanoate from propane. So if you haven't guessed, uh, what I want you to do is try and create propanoic acid from propane. Propanoic acid from propane. Pause the video and figure out how it's done. Okay, so here's how um, the book describes it, and this is something you have to think about. Here's propane, meth, eth, propane. Propane reacts with chlorine gas, as looked in 10.2. In the presence of UV light, remember these um, intermediates that you need, you need the chlorine gas and you need UV light, to break, um, to cause a substitution reaction at either end of the propane. And one of the chlorines will substitute on the other on one of the sides, and it'll become one chloropropane. And the H that it that the hydrogen that it kicks off will join with the other chlorine that's by itself and make hydrochloric acid. It's a byproduct. The one chloropropane reacts with our hydroxyl group and does a substitution, and then you end up with propanol. And there's that propanol there. And then from propanol we have a reaction. What is a natural reaction of the, the, alcohol, the alkanol to the, um, the acid, but we want the accelerated version. Remember, we want things to be as little time as possible, as quick as possible, so we add the uh, dichromate, Cr2O72-, and an acidic environment to accelerate that reaction. So if you got that, well done. From here, propane to chloropropane, one chloropropane, um, it could also produce, produce two chloropropane. And how do you get rid of it? Uh, well, the way you get rid of it is through fractional distillation. Um, it's not accessible in the current study design, but it's good to know. You can have a look in chapter 10.6 on how you get rid of unwanted byproducts. Because you don't want two chloropropane reacting to propane 2 ol and then making something weird. Um, you want to actually have the right chloropropane um, molecule, and so you separate that through fractional distillation. In a perfect world, um, if you could control it, you wouldn't you would have a reaction that doesn't even need to be fractionally distillated and only produces one chloropropane. But that's beyond the scope of the study. This should be number three. 
Um, okay, so you've made um, ethanol from ethane, and you've made propanoic acid from propane. How are you going to put them together? So, if you haven't figured it out already, draw a map of reaction pathway for the production of ethyl propanoate from ethane and propane. Ethane and propane. How are we going to do it? And it looks like this. You can open up your book now. I know you've been busy. It looks, this is a full um, reaction pathway. You can see that the original reactions, reactants have to go through processes to make your final products. And you have to know how to get from an ane, an alkane, to a chloro, a haloalkane, or a chloroalkane, to an alcohol, an alkanol, to a, an, uh, an acid. And same with the ethene, you should be able to know how to get an alkene to an alcohol, and then make this reaction happen at the proper note. That's the scope and the depth that you need to know. Now, that's number one. Can you create reaction pathways for organic molecules? That takes a lot of practice. You need to practice to using those flowcharts and remembering um, how you get from one to the other, how to get from an alkane to an alkene, or an alkene to an, um, a halo, halo alkane, etc., etc. Yield is something that you need to consider as well, um, but it's a separate uh, calculation. And yield is all about more uh, finding out how much product you'll actually make versus how much you thought you would make. So just like using mole ratios to find out the product that you have from a reaction, yield is calculated based upon how efficient each step is in the reaction. The best way to look at it is in uh, example 10.5. In a particular synthesis, the yield of step A to step B is 80%, and the yield of B to C is 70%. Calculate the overall percentage in preparation from, of C from A. If you have a look here, A to B, uh, if it was this reaction here, A to B, ethene to ethanol is a one-to-one -one ratio, but let's say it's not the case, and it's only 80% efficient. That means for every one mole of this, you have 0.8 moles of this. And that 0.8 moles of B can only can react further to make C, and only 70% of that will actually turn to C. And the solution is here. 80% is 8 tenths of the theoretical mass of B is formed, and then 7 tenths of C is formed from B, and then you just multiply them together. So 80% times 70%, 8 tenths over 7 tenths, gives you 56 over 100, uh, which is 56%. So we're looking at yields, and sometimes reactions don't actually produce what we want. They actually produce less than because of the way in which they work, the conditions that they're in, um, the cost cutting that you're doing. And this reaction is only 50% efficient. That is, for every 100 grams of A that you have, only 56 will actually turn out to be C. This is what yield is all about. And there's a few questions in the, in the textbook that get you to practice that calculation. So in summary, we've looked at how reaction pathways work and looking at how yield um, is something that we think about. You need to know how to do the reaction pathways. So we're at the end of the class now, and this is what I'd like you to do. As always, there's the questions that have been designated on the student guide, uh, which is on Edmodo, so that you can get your Fs. Make sure you do those questions and make sure you get those notes down. And also, there's a bit of a bonus attached to underneath this YouTube link um, on Edmodo. There's this question here. Go back. Um, it's from 2000, 2008 Chemistry Exam 1. Um, it's on page 23. Um, I want you to attempt this question and see if you can figure it out. You start off with a chloroalkane, a haloalkane, and you end up with something there. Print it out, work it out, and see if you can get the answer right. The answers will be submitted up on Edmodo later in the week. And that's the end of the class.